So this is the um, 2020 FTC Java presentation. And then my name is Guadalupe Rodriguez and my name is Shruti. So this is understanding basic syntax. So the different data types. Um, so first off, what is a data type? A data type are just different ways to group data. And in real life examples that you can think of are numbers, words, letters, characters, animals, and humans. Um, in Java, we have integers and decimal numbers, which you, which will be floats or des floats or doubles. Um, and then we have really big numbers, and they're long, and they're called longs. Then you have strings, characters, booleans, and objects. Okay, so int, the first variable that we're going to talk about is a positive or negative whole number, like we learn in math. So like um, five, six, negative two, a thousand. Um, they're all, notice how none of them are decimals. They're all just whole numbers. So um, a double or a float um, is a decimal number. Uh, when in doubt, just use a double. So a char is a keyboard character. You always have to remember to put um, single quotes around it. And then a Boolean is a true or false value. So it's really good for conditionals. And um, an object, if y'all have ever seen DC motor or servo, um, is, it's a Java object. So the skeleton of the um, variable would be int x equals 10 with a semicolon at the end. So the integer would be just the type of data we went over. And then x is the name of the variable and 10 is the value that x contains. So just x equals 10. And then whenever you end a statement, always remember to end it with a semicolon. So now we're gonna talk about if statements. They basically, they allow your program to make decisions. So you execute code based on a condition. For example, the code below, it says if this condition, whatever the condition is, if it's true, then execute this code. Else if, if another condition is true, then execute this different code. Else, um, uh, out of all those things, else if that, um, then just execute this even more different code. So let's adjust a variable based on the gamepad buttons for tell ya. So you would do double number equals zero if gamepad one a number equals 0 0.75, else if gamepad one b uh, number equals 0 0.5, else number equals one. Okay. So, so, um, okay. So the hardware map, we're gonna be going over it right now. So give me a second to pull it up. Um, there might be an email provided to y'all. Um, feel free to follow along that. Or, yeah, that would be good. Can you guys see it? Yes. Okay, so what is a hardware map? So and it's an object that has all the hardware mapping as described by configuration files on the robot controller app. All of your robot configuration should, files should be in there. So um, that, that whole um, section below that um, is connected to the FTC SDK library, which is like a collection of software it interacts with the robot hardware. So it's basically a library of classes which allow your programs to access any part of the Tetrix robot control system and all the hardware devices. So it's basically, um, it's this API for robot hardware and control systems. You can access the libraries with import statements. Um, uh, if, well, those are the three dots there, but if you click them, you can see all those. Um, and then you, you can import all the hardware classes there um, uh, using your op modes. If you're wondering what an op mode is, it basically defines how your robot behaves. So where it says below that, where it says um, public class hardware example, this class will hold variables to represent all the programmable components on the robot. So in it, you'll see all these DC motor stuff and stuff like that. And it contains all these variables that we set to null. 
and null is the default value of reference type variables. So in here you set all the variables to null initially. So then after that, you will see the hardware map HW map equals null um, or yeah, something like that. And so the HW map is a variable used to hold the hardware map. And again, you set it to null. Below that, you'll see a constructor, which is a block of code similar to a method that's called when an object is created. So you leave the constructor empty to initialize an, um, an object that doesn't need parameters in that initialization process. So after that, as you can see, the method below is called in all programs, including teleop and autonomous to initialize the components. A method is a collection of statements that are grouped together to operate. So for example, system.out.print ln, um, if y'all have ever heard that, um, it's a method that when you call that method, the system executes these several statements um, to display the message on your console. So, and then you can see that the hardware map is passed in from the teleop slash autonomous. Um, okay, so if you guys scroll below that, this is where you define all the motors that you declared in the beginning when you wrote, for example, public D DC motor from motor left equals null. Um, we declared it in that line of code, but now we need to define it. Okay, so when you see the name in the quotes, that is what pops up in your configurations um, on your robot controller app. They should look exactly alike. So, all right then, so now we've reached the motor configuration. So there are three methods used. So the first one is set direction. This property specifies the initial direction or default direction. Um, and when you run both left and right motors, they run the same direction when receiving the same power. Um, then there's set zero power behavior. Usually when you set a motor to zero power, the motor actively tries to stay in the same position that breaks. Um, we can change that using the set zero power behavior method. It has two options. You can either break the default or uh, float where the motor is allowed to spin freely. So this can be helpful because when you know the motors are going to be pushed, you can set it to whether you do or you don't want it to fight that external force. So and then there's set mode. Um, it just sets the input motion control mode of the motor. Um, and you can see the link below that for any more information in the comments. Um, so that basically concludes the hardware map of this presentation. Uh, feel free to comment on any aspect of this and thank you. So I'll now share the telly up. Okay, so um, we can start off with the imports, just like Shruti had already said, you can import different things into here and here, the, and then they are in the top. So the first one is going to be at teleop name equals teleop group equals demo. So just this just tells the phone and the group to display this op mode under under in the drive station app. And then underneath you'll see the public class teleop program extends the linear op mode uh, class to contain all the logic and variables relating to the teleported the teleoperated period of the game. Under that you will see the hardware example robot equals new hardware example and this just initializes a whole hard hardware class. And under that is at override. So Java attributes to the override of an inherited mode. You can read more about, about the inheritance at the link um, in the comments. And the inherited mode just contains all of the robot's logic. So under that, you'll see the public void run op mode. And underneath that, that just says to run everything. And underneath is the robot.map hardware map. And this initializes the robot or the hardware map of the robot. And the next is telemetry add data, say telemetry starting. So this, so whatever is in the quotes should be printed onto the phone screen. And then telemetry update, 
So you have to put that in for, to, for it to um, print on the phone. And then wait for start. So this line always goes uh, before any movement other than the initial. Any logic before this happens when you press initial on the phone. After this, the play button. So all of this under wait for start won't start until you play, push the play button. So a loop that will run as long as the op mode has not stopped by hitting the stop button is everything underneath the wait for start. So then you'll see while op mode is active. So if you forget the op mode is active in any of your loops, you will not pass field expression. So make sure you have that in there. And then you have robot motor left set power gamepad two left stick Y and then the rest of them underneath it. So read an, read an input for the joysticks in case the left and right axis values from the operator and apply them to the motors using the set power method. And that's basically it for teleop. It's really simple. You're just setting power to each thing. But yeah. So that concludes the FTC Java part of the presentation. Um, thank you guys for your time.